When we think of royal families, we imagine gold crowns, fancy palaces, and a life of luxury. However, some members of royal families around the world are actually living paycheck to paycheck, though not in the way an ordinary man lives. It just means they're not nearly as wealthy as the king or other filthy rich people like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos. These royals might have fancy titles, but they don't have the big bank accounts to match. Let's explore the surprising stories of royal family members who are actually poor. Princess Eugenie. Princess Eugenie is 32 years old and lives a happy life away from the royal glitz and glamour. She works as an art director, has a loving husband, and is an amazing mom. Unlike some other royals, she likes to live an ordinary life. Eugenie has a close bond with her grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, and has even talked about her on social media. In a documentary called Our Queen at 90, Eugenie spoke about Balmoral, a special place in Scotland that her grandmother loves. She said, It's the most beautiful place on earth. Granny is the happiest there. She loves the highlands, walks, picnics, and dogs. So many dogs. It's also a place where the family comes together to visit Queen Elizabeth and her husband, Prince Philip. For Eugenie, this place brings lots of good memories. When Eugenie got engaged, her grandmother was one of the first people she told. Eugenie shared that her grandmother was very happy for her, and so was her grandfather, Prince Philip. In 2020, after the Queen's Christmas speech, Eugenie posted on Instagram about how much her grandmother's words meant to her, calling her Granny and showing the world their special bond. Even though Eugenie is 12th in line for the throne, she doesn't like to talk about her royal title. She finds it annoying when people remind her of it. She even jokes with her friends about it. One of her best friends likes to call her princess, and Eugenie tells them to stop because she doesn't enjoy being called that. Just like her sister, Princess Beatrice, Eugenie chose not to be a working royal, this means she doesn't do official royal duties or receive money from the royal family. Instead, she followed her passion for art and became an art director at a gallery in London. Eugenie has loved art since she was a little girl, though she knew she didn't want to be a painter. She loves sharing her love of art with others and helping people see things in new ways. She finds it exciting when she helps someone understand a piece of art by suggesting they look at it differently. Besides art, Eugenie loves to travel. Since she was 16, she has been saving her airplane tickets and hopes to use them as wallpaper in a cupboard one day. When she was 18, she went backpacking to places like India, America, Thailand, and South Africa. She stayed in cheap hostels and flew on budget airlines. British media once reported that she went on eight trips in just 15 months. This made her boss tell her to take fewer holidays for a while. Traveling also helped her find love. In 2010, Eugenie met Jack Brooksbank while skiing in Switzerland. She was 20 years old and he was 24. They quickly fell in love because they shared the same passion for life. Seven years later, they got engaged while on holiday. Jack proposed during a sunset by a volcano in Nicaragua. Eugenie starts her day early, around 6.45 in the morning. She works out in the park, doing exercises like burpees, squat jumps, and lunges. Sometimes she goes to the gym with her best friend. Afterward, if she needs groceries, she'll stop by a store nearby. When her workday ends, she might attend an event or have dinner with her husband or friends. On other nights, she goes home, cooks, and relaxes by watching television. Even though she doesn't like reality television, Eugenie enjoys cooking shows. Some of her favorite snacks include fries, Diet Coke, and cashew nuts with mustard. She also loves watching Netflix in her downtime. Eugenie is the first royal family member to have a personal Instagram account. She often posts about her life, her family, and special memories. She and her sister Beatrice want to show people who they are as young working royal women. Eugenie believes that it's important to be real on social media, even though many people only show perfect images of themselves. For her, 
being real and not hiding behind perfect pictures is important. Prince Edward Prince Edward, the youngest son of Queen Elizabeth, has tried many different jobs in his life. Instead of just sticking to royal duties like the rest of his family, he wanted to do more and try new things. Some of his projects worked, but others didn't go as well. Like his father and siblings, Edward went to school at Gordonstown, then studied history at Jesus College, Cambridge. He graduated in 1986. Now he spends most of his time as a full-time working royal with his wife, Sophie, who is known as the Countess of Wessex. One of the biggest things Edward did was start a television company called Ardent Productions. They made dramas and documentaries, mostly about royal life. One of their biggest projects was a documentary called Edward on Edward, which told the story of his great uncle, King Edward VIII. King Edward had given up his throne in 1938 to marry someone he loved, and it caused a lot of trouble. While this show got attention, most of the other things Ardent made weren't very popular. A writer from The Guardian said watching Ardent's shows was like seeing a world where everyone dressed very formally. They said it felt old-fashioned. In the end, Edward's television company didn't last, and it was closed down. When they sold what was left of it, the company's assets were only worth about 40 pounds. After his television career ended, Edward took on more responsibilities from his father, Prince Philip, who retired from royal duties. One of Prince Philip's most important projects was starting the Duke of Edinburgh's award in 1956. The award helps young people learn important skills for life and work. Edward has been involved with the program for a long time, and in 2015 he became the chairman of the trustees for the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Foundation. This means he helps lead the award and travels around the world giving out awards and promoting the program. Edward has been dedicated to the Duke of Edinburgh Award since he earned his own gold award in 1986. A year later, he became a trustee for the charity and worked on the International Council for 17 years. In 1999, he started a special group to make sure the award could help young people who might be at risk or feel left out. His hard work has helped many young people around the world. Besides working with the Duke of Edinburgh Award, Edward also helps in other areas. He supports sports, especially the Paralympics and the Commonwealth Games. He's the patron of Paralympics GB and vice patron of the Commonwealth Games Federation. Edward also cares about the arts and music and supports these causes whenever he can. On top of all this, Edward holds eight military titles. He is the Royal Colonel of the 2nd Battalion, the Rifles, and he has visited them in different places around the world. He also holds military positions in Canada. At home, Edward lives with his wife, Sophie, and their two children, Lady Louise and James Viscount Severn. They all live at Bagshot Park, a big house in Surrey. Princess Beatrice. Princess Beatrice, the oldest daughter of the Duke and Duchess of York, lives a pretty normal life, even though she's part of the royal family. She doesn't have any royal duties like her uncle, King Charles, or her cousins. Instead, Beatrice has a regular job and lives with her husband, Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi, and their daughter, Sienna, in the countryside. It might seem surprising for someone with royal blood, but Beatrice manages to juggle her work and family life just like anyone else. Beatrice works full-time in finance. She began as an analyst at a wealth management firm and later became the vice president of strategic partnerships at a software company called Affinity. Even though she's the daughter of Prince Andrew and Sarah, Duchess of York, she and her younger sister, Princess Eugenie, aren't working royals. That means they don't get money from the royal family for their daily lives and have to earn their own living. Beatrice's father, Prince Andrew, actually wanted this for his daughters. He once said that he hoped they could have normal careers and live like modern women, even though they're part of the royal family. He was proud to see them build their lives while still helping the family when needed. Even on her wedding day, Beatrice kept things simple. She got married to Edo in July 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic, so the ceremony had to be small. 
But instead of buying a brand new expensive dress, Beatrice wore a beautiful gown that belonged to her grandmother, Queen Elizabeth. The wedding was small, but Beatrice still looked amazing in the vintage dress, and it showed how down-to-earth she is. Beatrice is also known for making practical choices in her everyday life. For example, when she attended a fancy birthday party in London, she wore bright pink shoes from a regular high street brand called Stradivarius. And just in case her feet got tired from dancing, she packed a pair of flats. It's little things like this that make her seem so relatable, even though she's a princess. Beatrice has had her share of challenges too. Her family has faced some hard times, especially with her father, Prince Andrew, who has been involved in controversies. But despite these difficulties, Beatrice has shown strength and grace. She's been called a secret weapon by some people because of how she handles tough situations. She's seen both the good and bad sides of life, and that makes her more understanding. Some people even believe that Beatrice might be the key to fixing some of the problems in the royal family. There have been issues between Prince Harry, Prince William, and King Charles, but Beatrice could help bring them back together. Her ability to see both sides of an argument might help heal the family's rifts. Some think that if anyone can help, it might be Beatrice or her aunt, Princess Anne. Beatrice may not be in the spotlight as much as some of the other royals, but she's managed to live a life that's both relatable and admirable. She's found a way to balance her royal heritage with a more everyday approach to life. Whether it's in her job, her fashion choices, or the way she handles family challenges, Beatrice is proof that even a princess can lead a normal life while still being an important part of the royal family. Sophie. Sophie married Prince Edward 25 years ago, and over time she changed from a regular PR worker into a well-loved and important part of the royal family. She was very close to Queen Elizabeth and even called her mama in a speech which showed just how special their relationship was. Sophie is a mother of two children, Lady Louise Windsor, who is now 20, and James, Viscount Severn, who is 16. Even though she's a royal, Sophie tries hard to balance her royal duties, charity work, and being a mom. This has become even more challenging since Prince Andrew and Prince Harry stepped back from royal life, leaving Sophie with more to do. Sophie, who is always calm and graceful, often stays out of the spotlight during big events. There's a chance she might have a small party for her close family at Bagshot Park, the home where she and Edward raised their children. They gave their kids as normal a childhood as possible, even though their grandparents lived in castles. Sophie grew up in a regular family, with her mom working as a secretary and her dad selling tires. She had a successful job in public relations, working for Capital Radio, and later, in 1996, she started her own PR company with a partner. Sophie met Prince Edward in the late 1980s, but at that time, he was dating one of her friends. A few years later, in 1993, they met again when Sophie was working at a photo shoot for a project Prince Edward was promoting. They began dating, but it wasn't until 1998 that Edward proposed. He did it while they were on holiday in the Bahamas and gave Sophie a special diamond ring with two heart-shaped stones. Their wedding in 1999 was not as grand as some other royal weddings. There were no big parades or military involvement, but it still drew in 200 million TV viewers. Sophie wore a stunning dress covered in pearls and crystals, and she wore a tiara from the Queen's own jewelry collection. Sophie's career in PR came to an end in 2001, when she was tricked into saying some things she probably shouldn't have, like calling the Queen an old dear. This caused her to stop her PR work and focus more on her royal duties. Sophie admitted that it wasn't easy to shift from being a businesswoman to becoming a full-time royal. She had to change how she worked and learn that her role was more about showing support rather than trying to take charge. Even though Sophie and Edward's children are part of the royal family, they wanted to make sure their kids had a regular life. The children went to local schools, 
and Lady Louise even worked at a garden center before going to St. Andrews University. Sophie made sure her kids had sleepovers with friends, walked their dogs, and did things any other family might do. Sophie once said that while her children's grandmother was the queen, to them, she was just grandma. The queen trusted Sophie more than many others in the family. Some people even said the queen thought of Sophie more like a daughter than a daughter-in-law. Sophie and the queen spent a lot of time together, watching movies or historical documentaries. The queen trusted Sophie so much that she was often invited to travel with her to church. After Prince Harry and Meghan Markle stepped back from royal life and Prince Andrew stopped his duties, due to the Epstein scandal, Sophie's role became even more important. She is now more visible in royal life, continuing to serve the crown while also supporting causes close to her heart, like fighting for the rights of women and girls. She was praised for how strong and composed she was after the deaths of both, Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth. Sophie and Edward's daughter, Lady Louise, has grown into a quiet success, just like her mother. She stays out of the spotlight, but is starting to take on more public roles with her parents. Lady Louise has a love for horses, just like her grandfather, Prince Philip. Sophie has also played the role of a peacemaker in the family. Around the time of Queen Elizabeth's funeral, there were reports that Sophie helped smooth things over between Prince Harry, Meghan, and the rest of the royal family. Sophie even visited Harry and Meghan when their son Archie was born, showing her kind and caring side. She made sure to check in on Meghan and meet baby Archie, just like any thoughtful friend would do. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle Prince Harry and Meghan Markle moved to Montecito, California, more than four years ago after leaving the United Kingdom. They've shared some personal stories through interviews, Harry's book, and a TV show, but they try to keep their family life private. As Harry gets closer to his 40th birthday, people are curious about their daily lives. Recently, there's been more information about their quiet routines and fancy lifestyle in their coastal town, according to Yahoo Entertainment. Harry enjoys the peaceful life in Montecito. He's often seen riding his bike or walking his dog on the beach with his security team nearby. But he tries to stay out of sight so neighbors don't see him much. His day usually starts with 30 to 40 minutes of meditation, and then he exercises with a personal trainer. Harry also enjoys spending time with his two kids, Archie, who's five, and Lilibet, who's three. He likes taking them to school and watching birds in their garden. Even though Harry prefers to stay out of the spotlight, Meghan is more active in the community. People often see Meghan at the local farmer's market or out with her friends. She's recently joined a club where people play mahjong, an old Chinese game that's becoming popular in Montecito. Meghan keeps a small group of close friends who are successful in their own lives and trust her deeply. Even though Harry and Meghan are famous, they don't interact much with their wealthy neighbors. According to Richard Meneards, a society columnist who also lives in their fancy Riven Rock neighborhood, people are eager to see more of them. But Harry and Meghan mostly keep to themselves. Sometimes they have dinner with important people, like Meghan's friend and neighbor, Whitney Wolf Hurd, the founder of Bumble but they stay distant from most of the community. Despite their big names, Harry and Meghan live a quiet life, enjoying their routines and raising their children while staying a bit mysterious to the people around them. Lady Louise Windsor. Lady Louise Windsor, part of the royal family, likes to live a more normal life compared to some of her relatives. She's the granddaughter of Queen Elizabeth but she's trying to stay down to earth, just like her parents, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh. Last year, when she was 19, people saw Louise driving a used Volkswagen Polo. It wasn't something fancy, and she even saved up for it by working at a garden center. She earned about 6.83 pounds an hour, doing jobs like helping customers and taking care of the plants. People who saw her said she was friendly and did her work with a smile. Louise's idea to get a summer job came because 
She wanted to save up for her first car. Her parents helped by matching what she earned so she could buy the car and practice driving on the roads near her home. She passed her driving test on the first try. Louise finished school with four A-levels in subjects like English, history, and politics, which got her into St. Andrews University. This is where Prince William and Kate met. She decided to get a summer job, and her mom, Sophie, really supported this decision. Sophie didn't go to university herself, but she wanted Louise to have the chance. Sophie once said, I hope she goes to university. I won't force her, but she's smart enough. Even though Louise is part of the royal family, she decided not to use the royal title she could have had. When she turned 18, she had to choose whether to use Her Royal Highness, like her cousins Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie. But Louise thought it wasn't necessary, saying those titles often bring too much attention. Louise has had a fairly quiet life, not always in the public eye. She grew up in a big, fancy home, but her parents wanted her and her brother James to have a normal childhood. They went to regular schools, hung out with friends, and did normal activities like going on walks with their dogs. When Louise was younger, she had trouble with her eyes. She was born with a condition called esotropia, which made her eyes look outward. After two surgeries, her eyesight improved. This even inspired her mom to help support groups that prevent blindness. Louise doesn't like to wear super expensive clothes like other royals. She often chooses outfits from regular stores. Sometimes she even wears hand-me-downs from her mom, Sophie. Louise and her family also enjoy helping out with charity work. In 2021, they were spotted picking up trash at a beach cleanup, looking just like any other family. As for vacations, they prefer to keep things simple. Recently, they head to Balmoral in Scotland, where the family always spends time. This year will feel a bit different without their grandma, the Queen. But King Charles has invited them to keep the tradition going. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.